Aaron, how do we diagnose multiple sclerosis? At least since the days of a prominent French neurologist named Jean-Martin Charcot, in the middle of the 19th century, neurologists have been recognizing and diagnosing multiple sclerosis. And the principles of the diagnosis of MS haven't changed. Basically, we have to demonstrate what we refer to as dissemination in time and space. That means that in order to diagnose MS, you have to demonstrate that a person has had uh, injury or damage to multiple parts of the central nervous system, the brain, the spinal cord, or the optic nerve, and that the disease has had to have been active at multiple points in time. Now, of course, in the days of Charcot, all they had was their own wits and a, maybe a reflex hammer and a pin. Nowadays, we have much more sophisticated tools. And the, the tool that's been of most important to us has been the MRI scan or magnetic resonance imaging. And modern uh, methods for diagnosis incorporate the use of, of MRI. And the MRI can help us satisfy either dissemination in space or dissemination in time. So that if we see lesions um, in the brain and spinal cord on MRI, multiple lesions in certain patterns and numbers, then we say the person meets criteria for dissemination in space. If we see lesions appearing at different points in time, that is on MRI scans obtained at different points in time, then that helps us meet the criteria for dissemination in time. Now sometimes we use some other tests to help us with the diagnosis. Uh, for instance, looking at the, the cerebrospinal fluid, the fluid that, that bathes the brain, that often has characteristic abnormalities that are indicative, though not absolutely specific for MS. And certain other physiological tests, referred to as evoked potentials, can also show evidence of uh, different areas of the nervous system that are involved. But again, the principle hasn't changed over hundreds of, e of years now. We want a person who has neurological complaints, has abnormalities on the neurological exam, and either those clinical signs and symptoms or combined with MRI, they indicate multiple areas of the nervous system are involved and uh, these problems have occurred at multiple points in time. Now, we use these techniques to diagnose various different types of MS. About 85% of people present with uh, what we refer to as relapsing remitting MS. So these people have had episodes where they develop neurological symptoms and then these typically improve and then time goes on and then they get another episode. So that could be dissemination in time that way in multiple areas or new lesions appearing on MRI scan. About 10 to 15 percent of people present with what's called primary progressive MS. So they never have a relapse from which they recover. Instead, they little by little get worse over time. That's called primary progressive MS. But even in those cases, we have to meet the criteria for dissemination in time, but this time we meet it by having a prolonged period of time. Some people say at least six months, some people say at least a year of progression. And again, we have to find evidence that multiple parts of the nervous system are involved.